A great jobs report was just issued today that exceeded all expectations. Private sector jobs in the U.S. increased by 497,000. The United States has the strongest GDP growth of any G7 nation post-pandemic and the lowest inflation of any G7 nation post-pandemic. All right. Compare that with what's going on in MAGA world. Donald Trump is calling special counsel Jack Smith a crackhead. Marjorie Taylor Greene is kicked out of the far right wing group that calls itself the Freedom Caucus because she was not extreme enough for them and was mean to Lauren Boebert and oh. former Vice President Pence bragged about how the rich should definitely not pay their fair share of taxes. Donald Trump's co-defendant, Walt Nauta, was finally arraigned today after he found a licensed Florida lawyer, I think, to represent him. Nauta was apparently too busy getting cheesesteaks for Donald Trump to find a lawyer. Meanwhile, federal judge Eileen Cannon has ordered all of the lawyers in the federal criminal case brought by special counsel Jack Smith to file certifications, certifications of compliance that they have complied with requirements to handle classified information before the next hearing, which will be taking place before her on July 14th. Special counsel Jack Smith seems to be finalizing his criminal investigation into Donald Trump's 2020 election interference. Let's not forget there is that other criminal investigation taking place. And I think we can expect to see more indictments from special counsel Jack Smith there against Donald Trump in the next few months. We learned of a recent subpoena sent by special counsel Jack Smith to the Arizona Secretary of State, Adrian Fontes, to get information about two frivolous lawsuits that were filed for Trump in 2020. Also, a Trump-appointed federal judge in Louisiana ruled that the Biden administration can no longer contact social media companies to, quote, urge or persuade them to publish accurate information. The rest isn't a quote. I'm giving you how I feel with the opinion set, what the opinion <laughs> says now. So they, they can urge or persuade them to publish accurate information about COVID, accurate information about vaccines, accurate information about our elections. The federal judge is basically claiming in this order when you break it down that disinformation that anti-vax rhetoric and lies about COVID, that that's conservative speech and that you will be discriminating against conservative speech if the Biden administration provides accurate information to mm -hmm. social media companies. The judge says that's like the ministry of truth. No, it's actually disinformation and a dangerous lies and should be corrected. But thankfully, President Biden is now being referred to as a judicial confirmation factory and has appointed 136 federal judges, qualified law and order, diverse judges far outpacing other presidents and from the judicial confirmation factory to opening up actual factories and manufacturing plants across America. I don't know about you, Midas Mighty, but I like presidents who win who do things for the American people, and who focuses on what matters. And that's what we're here to talk about today. Welcome to the Midas Touch Podcast. How about positive news at the top this time? I got a lot of feedback like on a video I did where I showed President Biden's tweets and compared them to Trump posts. And a lot of the response were, Ben, do this more often. Give us the give us the positive <laughs> news and tell us what Biden is doing. You could, you could touch on the negative. So- I listen and I hear you. You got to give the people what they want then. You got you. to give the people what they want. I, I know what the people want to know. They want to know the most important news of the day, of the week, perhaps. Is Jordy's mic working again? It and is. I am happy to report that Jordy, you're coming through loud and clear. Jordy, can we can we hear you for a sec? I'm so excited. I'm so You guys sabotaged my <laughs> mic last episode. I'm ready to go tonight. 
<laughs> yeah, the fans were, are, you know, very upset by you very last upset, week that, that that you would treat your yeah. mic so poorly. Yeah. But but you are back in action. Uh, just in time for us to talk about threads. We're on threads now. That's a new exciting development. Ooh. Uh, go Ooh. and follow us on the threads app. I've, I've been addicted to the threads app all day. I'm not I'm not even going to lie. It, You're a it threadhead. Goes to Threadhead, total, total threadhead. It goes to show you, you know, how horrible do you have to be as a human being and as a business person to make people want to go to the Mark Zuckerberg product? Like you got it, you got, you, you got to be pretty, pretty horrific, but it is a lot, of, but it is a lot of fun. It feels like the old Twitter, you know, without the Nazis and all that sort of stuff. So it's, it's, it's a good, it's a good thing. It's a good sign. I'm having fun. Follow us over there, all of us individually and at Midas Touch. Jordy, how you doing? Other, other than the mic, is everything going okay? No, everything's going great. I'm really excited for tonight show i'm just ready to rock ben i like that green shirt you're wearing really really sharp you don't wear green too much you look good in green big bro you know i thought today was green because of the june jobs report (laughs) i'm corny sometimes the june jobs report (laughs) is out and wow private sector jobs in in the united states increased by four hundred and ninety seven thousand blowing past expectations of 220,000. Leisure and hospitality led with 232,000 new hires, followed by construction with 97,000 in trade, transportation, and utilities with 90,000. Companies with fewer than 50 employees were responsible for most of the job growth, adding 299,000 positions. In addition, annual pay rose at a rate of 6.4%. I want to show you the moment right now where Fox Business, because they cheer against (laughs) the Biden administration, they cheer against Bidenomics. The the great thing when President Biden talks about Bidenomics now, because the objective data, U.S. has the strongest GDP growth of any G7 nation post-pandemic that the United States has the lowest inflation of any G7 nation. So that was intended to be an insult by dynamics before that at President Biden, right? And so President Biden's like, no, you, you coined it to make fun of me, but I'm okay with Bidenomics. You know, rather than trickle down economics, we're talking about bottom up, middle up, bottom up, middle out. Like, how about we actually focus on... I don't know, the 99.99% of people out there like workers rather than like, what can we do Mm -hmm. to make sure billionaires don't pay their fair share? Hmm. What? This is what like Republicans think. What if we, okay, get this. Here's, here's a good plan. What if we basically (laughs) say, what if we basically say that they can get, you know, tax exemptions for private jets? Oh, I love it. But let's not stop there. How about we also give them deductions for yachts? Okay, the private jet and yacht deduction, brilliant. I mean, that's what the MAGA Republicans are talking about. And President Biden's talking about what can we do for the people? How do we give you better working conditions when you're sick? How do we make sure you're paid for sick leave? How do we support unions? How do we make sure that there isn't just a minimum wage, by the way? If Republicans had their way, not only would there not be like a minimum wage, they would basically pay people like slave labor. Like that's the that's what they ultimately want. And you've got Democrats and and led by President Biden saying, no, you need to give people not just like a living wage, but a wage with dignity. Bidenomics. And by the way, what we are experiencing right now is the early signs of a manufacturing boom. We'll talk more about that on the show, but let me show you now the reaction by Fox to these job numbers. Play the clip. Yes. Hold on, 497. That is a big, big, wow. big jump above the estimate of 228K. That is, uh, that is that's, that's double of what economists uh, have predicted. Let me look, 497,000 jobs added on private payroll. Well, that's not recessionary at all. By the way, look at the economist spread here. The estimates were anywhere from 95,000 jobs added for ADP to 334,000 jobs for ADP. So this is even in the, I mean, the range didn't even get anywhere near the actual number uh, that we got. But yeah, private sector jobs, Sean, 497,000 your reaction. 
Yeah, well, I mean, it's just a testament to the strength of the U.S. economy. I would, I would expect there'll be some revision to that number. It's so far out of line. Mm. Um, but, you know, that's, that's what's going on right now. The U.S. economy continues to sort of, you know, move along in a very rapid pace. I like that they can't even fully believe it. I think that there's going to be a revision, maybe a revision up. Yeah, and by the way, it keeps getting revised up for previous months. Every single month that we get the job report, we get the revisions for the previous month saying that they actually underestimated the job growth. And it's like, while you're watching this and listening to these clips, don't you feel like you've been gaslighted for the past few months or even for the past couple of years by all these news networks that have continuously told you day in and day out, recession's coming, recession's around the corner, here comes the recession and we're like that's not what any of this data is saying like of course we're in unprecedented times with inflation from the pandemic and supply chains being out of whack but if you actually look at the data of the recovery it paints a much different picture from all these people trying to push this whole recession narrative and one of my favorite traditions in the beginning of every month now is watching Fox have to react to these job numbers so these are the job numbers that came through by ADP a lot of people probably know ADP because uh, it's the private payroll company who a lot of employers mm. throughout the country use. You probably have seen it on many of your paychecks, ADP. The official federal jobs numbers will be released on Friday. But this is, of course, a good sign for those. I, on an aside, I, I got to say, it's a weird incentive structure for the economy. It's, it's, it's kind of a tangent and a separate issue that when jobs numbers are good, it actually spooks the stock market because they then go, oh, no, does that mean the Fed, the Fed is going to raise rates some more? Like, like you have stockbrokers, you have people in the stock market rooting for the economy to slow down, rooting for fewer people to have jobs. It's just, it, it seems like a bit of a perverse incentive structure uh, when we should be happy that Americans are, are getting jobs. And especially from a small business perspective, especially from construction, from all these infrastructure projects. I mean, what we're really witnessing now is, frankly, everything that Trump continuously promised every what, every day of his presidency. I mean, it became a laughing stock when he would say it's infrastructure week, it's infrastructure week. And then somebody in his administration would get indicted. And that became a joke infrastructure week. And anytime some major F up happened in his administration, which was really on a daily basis, <laughs> they'd go up. Oh, it's infrastructure week again, but then Biden gets it done. And that's why you have all these distractions out there to just try to hide all the accomplishments at all times. It's, it's like the quote that you always bring up that, that Biden says, you know, uh, don't compare me to the almighty, compare me to the alternative. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the way the economy is right now compared to, I, I saw like Byron Donalds, the Republican from Florida, do a post like, don't you wish um, the American economy was like it was three years ago? I was like, when unemployment was over 11%? When we couldn't get toilet paper in the stores, like that, that's the econ when when 6000 people were dying a day. That, mm -hmm. This is the America that you want to go back to. I mean, that's sick. So you got to compare the economy to where we've come from and you got to compare the economy to how we're doing against frankly, every other nation in the world. And when you look at similar nations in the G7, you see the U.S. has the strongest GDP growth of any nation of, of all of them any nation post-pandemic, the lowest inflation of any G7 nation, the, the lowest. So what else could you possibly, what, could you want? Could, what else could you even ask for? Can we do better? Of course. Could we continue to push policies to make things better? Of course. But the answer to that is not to go backwards. It's not to go in reverse and go to the Republican policies that put us in those horrific situations every single time. The Republicans continuously drive the car into the ditch and then Democrats have to try to get the car out of the ditch. And then people complain that they're not getting the car out of the ditch fast enough. And then they go to the Republicans who brill it back in. It's it's an insane cycle. And hopefully we can continue to get out of it. And I think people are are seeing through it. I mean, people are, are, are feeling the results of these jobs. They're seeing the construction projects happen in their own neighborhoods now. So it's it's good that we're actually now getting to see the physical work, the physical manifestation of the bills, of the legislation that we've seen passed over the past couple of years. Absolutely, B. And look, what it comes down to is what, what you pointed out about Donald so astutely. I saw Bobert make a very similar comment on social media today too, you know, going after the economy. And it's like, look, Numbers don't lie. Republican leadership lies. And so ultimately, at the end of the day, the people 
American citizens can look at the economy, can look at those tangible numbers and understand how it's impacting their lives. And they don't have to be gaslit by these Republican leadership. I'll give you, I'll give you a sports analogy, Jordy. So let's, let's just it. say Ooh, the country I that you were rooting. I love your sports analogies because they're very good, but there's always like, there's always like something kind of weird about them. The country you're rooting for in the World Cup, right? They get through all of the rounds. They win. They're hoisting up the World Cup, right? They are number one. As against everybody else, they're number one. Right now, America, number one fastest growing economy. So what the MAGA Republicans would basically be doing, the team that's wearing the gold or hoisting up the World Cup, the Republicans are basically saying, Look at those losers over there in the number one position. They're freaking <laughs> losers over there. They hey, remember when we didn't get into the you know the Sweet Sixteen or remember when we didn't see that? That's the one mixing analogies. That's there what I'm saying. Go. That there's always something that's just a little <laughs> bit off with your sports and that, but it's fine because I get it. I get it. The Midas Mighty gets it too. Uh, it's like we won the World Cup, Grand Slam, home run. <laughs> Touchdown. Remember when we didn't qualify? <laughs> How great were those days when we didn't even qualify? Remember those? Um, hey, <laughs> exactly. not qualifying is worse than winning the World Cup. So you have to, again, have some basis of comparison. So let's give another basis of comparison. While President Biden's now going around the country talking about manufacturing plants and factories that he's opening up, this is what former Vice President Mike Pence is talking about, how the rich should not pay their fair share. Here, play this clip. And I, I, I'm somebody that I don't really buy into the, the rich need to pay their fair share. I know there are some people who are saying, I want to hear the rest of that argument. You are just clipping. What 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 else do you frankly do you frankly need to hear? He's <laughs> saying that he doesn't believe that the rich should pay their fair share. Everything else after that would not be clarifying. It would be worse. And indeed, if you want to go and find the longer clip, go look into it because his point is the rich pay enough. He thinks that the rich are overtaxed. He thinks that they are paying their fair share, even though if you just look at the data, the Trump. <laughs> it's such a crazy thing to say, like in general, like no matter your beliefs, like you can't say they should pay a fair share. Like, you, or they, yeah, no, they should get they should get perks. They should get benefits. They should pay an unfair share. It's it's like a it's a crazy thing to say. And he's saying this to a very small crowd in a very tiny room. I think it was in Iowa uh, that he's given mm. this speech. You think there are any millionaires uh, sitting in those seats? You think there are any billionaires that he's talking to about the rich? Eh, maybe they shouldn't uh, pay their fair share. How is that a winning mess? Like Republicans at least used to pretend at least used to pretend like they cared about, you know, giving people a fair shot. And even when they then put all the benefits onto the rich, they would at least dangle that out. So I, frankly, I don't know what's better that they're saying it out loud now or, or what it's, it's hard to even say. No, let them speak. There. Give them the microphone. Let them speak. I say it all the time. And I just feel for our audio listeners right now too, because that clip is extra bizarre. I mean, what is like from Pence's smirk, to the way he's holding his hands on his belt to like him sticking his belly out. <laughs> Yo, the whole all, clip is bizarre. Dude, they're all yeah, they so really weird, don't they, so they really weird. don't engage in like the most basic human interactions. MAGA Republicans <laughs> just don't get like they don't get right. Like I, I, I won't go, I won't show you the clips again because it will make you sick. But if you go over and you look at like just DeSantis, right? Like he doesn't know how to eat a pizza. Like he eats a pizza through his nose. Like what are you like, what are you doing? He continue, like it's not like once. He continuously wipes his boogers on people. He takes his snot and just like wipes it on people. He laughs yeah. before jokes. He laughs before the jokes are told. So someone's saying a story and he's like, ha, 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 you know, and he laughs like a like a mad person. Like it's just th these people have never, I think, engaged in like actual human interaction but okay again don't compare me to the almighty compare me to the alternative right you just saw pence let me show you president biden promoting his economic record in south carolina and taking a shot at the same time at marjorie taylor green and basically saying hey one of the biggest manufacturing pr uh, projects is in marjorie taylor green's district i'll be there for the groundbreaking play the clip 
Since I took office, we've seen over 60 domestic manufacturing announcements all across the solar supply chain. One of the biggest is in Dalton, Georgia. You may find it hard to believe, but that's Margaret Taylor Green's district. <laughs> I'll be there for the groundbreaking. <laughs> And what I love to see what President Biden is doing now, though, is <laughs> okay. going state to state and talking about these projects. And what we are seeing now with our own eyes is actually government working, how the Infrastructure Act is leading to more projects, how the CHIPS Act is bringing semiconductor jobs high paying jobs back to the United States. We're seeing when you actually try to make things better and you're smart and sophisticated and you talk through these issues, how you can achieve things that actually benefit people. Because well, how does this benefit people? I mean, pull up some of these Trump posts from the past 24 to 48 hours. Like he never once talks about, here's what I want to do for you. Here's what I can do. This is one of them. Does anybody really believe that the cocaine, and he puts that in caps, found in the West Wing of the White House, very close to the Oval Office, is for the use of anyone other than Hunter and Joe Biden. But watch, the fake news media will soon start saying that the amount found was very small and it, was, and it wasn't really cocaine, but rather common ground up aspirin. And the story will vanish. Has deranged Jack Smith, the crazy Trump-hating special prosecutor, been seen in the area of the cocaine? He looks like a crackhead to me. You know, and these ridiculous things that he says. Always. Total and complete, all complete lies. This is the stuff that he says at events. And Brett, to your point, like when I see former Vice President Pence telling people the rich should not pay their fair share. You know, when you've got Trump at these events that he says are far bigger than they actually are, like when he's in Pickens and he does the speech, deranged warthog, he calls him a warthog, deranged warthog. There's a, yeah, you know, he calls him a warthog, Jordy. Yeah. Deranged <laughs> warthog. <laughs> Jack Smith is coming after me and they're all out to get me. Because they're out to get you. It's like, what the heck are who, who is who's for real? Who's like, yeah, yeah. It's, well, that's freaking war, you freaking warthog. You, you, you freaking warthog. I mean, it's ridiculous. It is a ridiculous. Like, it's a ridiculous warthog. You know, we, we went from yes, we can, yes, we can to like warthog. Oink, oink, oink. It's, 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 <laughs> no, it's it's really actually crazy stuff. And I know the large media networks want to be like, oh, what a a forceful showing in Pickens, South Carolina. President Biden just spoke about his education plan in Pickens. He did? Did he, though? Pickens has 3,300 people, you know, in the whole town. I know what 75,000 people looks like. I've seen Taylor Swift concerts. I've seen Obama hum rally. Humble brag. Really? Donald Trump's leading freaking warthog chance. Okay. It's utterly. It's, uh, real quick, it, going it, back it, to that post, you know how we also say that every accusation is an admission here? There was like talking about the ground up aspirin, how they were going to say was that like, that is such a specific thing to come out and say the White House was going to say. I mean, obviously, one, Trump one, has one, used that one. Here, here's one of the funniest things. So Don Jr. Uh, responded because, you know, a lot of people are like, Don Jr. must It must have been Don Jr.'s. And Don Jr.'s excuse wasn't like, I don't even do that. Don Jr.'s excuse was, I haven't been there in three years. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was like, uh, there was another answer to that question that he could have went with. But interesting that you, interesting that you chose that. It's why, though, that they have to make it, it's why it's a cult, right? It's why they have to turn Trump into a cult leader because when you're not actually pushing policies, you have to make everything about yourself and mm -hmm. you have to make your own fate kind of be associated with the fate of the rest of the cult. So that's why you hear Donald Trump so often says, they're not coming after me, they're coming after you, or they're only coming after me to come after you. He's trying to tie those two things together. When he says things like America is doomed, which he says in one of these other posts that, that we'll pull up shortly, America is doomed. You need to do something. He's not talking about the United States of America. He's talking about himself. He is talking about me, Donald Trump, 
if if I go down, that means America is over. So he wants to connect those two, which is a, a move that dictators do. It's a move that cult leaders do. By the way, you know the project that is in Marjorie Taylor Greene's district? It's extra ironic because it is a solar manufacturing facility that's like a $2.5 billion investment, which is going to create thousands of jobs in her district, green energy jobs. And she consistently, just to show you how much these politicians in the Republican Party harm their own voters. She consistently rails against green energy, calls it a scam. Meanwhile, these are the jobs of the future. Like selfishly, if you want to actually be doing good for your constituents, if you want to be able to say, look at what I brought to my district, look at how I've helped the people, then you should want to promote green energy. You should want to promote these jobs of the future. But they are just so in the pockets of oil and gas. They are so just conspiratorial in Marjorie Taylor Greene's case. And it's destructive. It is all one big cult that does not exist in the factual world whatsoever. Think of, like, here's, here's another one of his posts. And by the way, he says this in his speeches. Like, this is like just a freaking whiny fascist baby. Like, who... who who is this person? Like, and the, and the Republicans are like, yeah, give him the nukes. Let him make life and death decisions over me. This guy, him, here, but pull this up. Like, like we have to talk about it. Like, here's the thing with large media networks, and I won't go fully. Like, you have to look at this. N- not that one. Let's go to the one with all caps. And yeah, this one. Like, let's. you have to look at this and go, this is a freaking crazy person, everybody. This, this is an insane person. You don't hear him say it once. That's what this is. Massive prosecutorial misconduct is currently taking place in America and the weaponization of law enforcement cannot be allowed to happen. Crime and inflation are rampant. Our borders are open. Our elections rigged. Our economy is in shambles. Our energy independence is gone. Our leader is mercilessly mocked and our country is being destroyed both inside and out. Do the people of this great nation even have a choice but to protest the potential doom of the United States of America, 2024 exclamation point, psycho, crazy person. Like you have to be like, this is a deranged fascist lunatic. And if the media was doing their job, they would be saying it the way we are. But, <laughs> but you know what? And it's another call to action, right, Ben? I mean, it's it, it's what he does. It's what a lot of these Republicans do. It's they make calls to action without explicitly saying attack so-and-so, carry out X and Y plan. They say everything's about to be doomed. We need the people to rise up, right? Or they'll post like, a, like Trump did recently, post Obama's address. address. Next thing you know, you have armed people showing up at their house with an arsenal full of weapons looking to kill a uh, former president Obama. That is the purpose of a lot of this also. It's to cause chaos. And while you could sit back and say, well, I didn't say, I didn't, what? I, didn't oh, do I, 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 I right? just said you're going to be doomed and take that your country. Hot, and hot. Oh, all, all I said was, you're going to be doomed. They're coming for you. And then I said, you better do something about it. And then I gave Obama's address. Uh, h- how am I responsible for it? Well, you know what? As you mentioned, Brett, Taylor Toronto is the individual, a January 6th insurrectionist mm-hmm. who was on the run. He didn't have a home address, so the Department of Justice and FBI couldn't find him. He was live streaming from in right around the block from Obama's home. He had guns and hundreds of rounds of ammunition, and fortunately, he was detained. But someone who was radicalized by Donald Trump. And by the way, we're going to talk about it in a little bit. Then the MAGA Republicans go, oh, oh, but Ben and Midas touch. You are discriminating against conservative viewpoints. These are all conservative viewpoints, killing people, spreading lies about vaccines, singing freaking songs with the insurrectionists. You know what the funny thing is? Like we made such good friends also with a lot of actual conservatives who are disgusted with the current day Republican Party. That's why Liz Cheney's statement, when I saw Liz Cheney's statement the other day, Liz Cheney, I don't have the clip, but she was speaking with NBC News and Lester Holt asked her a question and it it also showed how the media kind of gets things wrong here as well and Liz Cheney called him out for it she said the question but, was yeah. do you still consider yourself a conservative 
Yeah, and he added the second part, though, which was important. Do you still consider yourself a conservative, or do you feel like you have no place in the party? And she goes, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. She goes, those are two separate things. Do I consider myself a conservative? Yes. Place in the party. That party is not a conservative party. The Republican Party is anything but conservative. So yes, I still believe in conservative values. The Republican Party no longer believes in conservative values. The Republican Party has become a fascist death cult. So those are entirely different things, which I, which is why that we also try to separate those things because we could have debates. We're going to disagree with conservatives who we're friends with most of the time, right? But, mm -hmm. but they're at least like normal human beings who you know actually care about the country and who don't want to take us down a road of fascism and authoritarianism, which couldn't frankly agree is what more this with you. party wants couldn't, to do. Couldn't, couldn't agree more with you. And look, Trump posted like 20 other things like that. He also posted a QAnon meme. He posted a flag that says F Biden. I mean, completely, completely disqualifying stuff, but not in the modern day Republican Party. My, have they fallen. We've got a lot more to discuss, including Marjorie Taylor Greene getting kicked out of the far right wing group, the Freedom Caucus in the House of Representatives because she was not extreme enough. We've got that and much more. And again, one more thing. Those emojis, everyone loves those emojis. You could become a member of our YouTube channel Buy, become a member, gift memberships with the dollar sign below. Um, it is a fun way to contribute to the growth of this network, and we don't have outside investors. We still got a lot of show left. Let's take a quick break. Jewelry is having a big moment right now, and with hundreds of products popping up in your feed every day, it can be hard to find a brand you trust. Alex and Ani has been creating meaningful jewelry for over 20 years, designing pieces that connect you with all of life's important moments. With an emphasis on value, there's truly something for everyone. You might be most familiar with their signature charm bangle. This bracelet literally created the category of meaningful jewelry and had you stacking charms from your wrist to your elbow. This piece is an icon for a reason. Completely size inclusive, each bracelet is adorned with a symbol designed to tell your story and express your unique style. Beyond the bangle, you'll find stylish, affordable jewelry for every occasion, from classic pieces to bold statement looks. Don't know where to start? Alex and Ani makes it easy to unpack the trends you're after and sprinkle in your personality too. Each piece comes with a personalized message and meaning, truly making it the perfect gift. You can take comfort in knowing that you're shopping with a socially conscious brand as well. To date, Alex and Ani has donated over $60 million to nonprofits worldwide, connecting fashion and philanthropy in an easy, fun, affordable way. Visit alexandani.com right now to discover the confidence that comes with a perfectly accessorized piece of jewelry. Right now, Alex and Ani is offering our audience 20% off with code MIDAS at checkout. Again, head to alexandani.com, that's A-L-E-X-A-N-D-A-N-I.com, and use code MIDAS at checkout for 20% off your order. And now let's take a quick break to talk about our next partner, Fume. Cold turkey, it may be great on sandwiches, but there's a better way to break your bad habits. We're not talking about some weird mind voodoo from your wacky neighbor or some sketchy message board. We're talking about our sponsor, Fume, and they look at the problem in a different way. Now, not everything in a bad habit is wrong. So instead of drastic, uncomfortable change, why not just remove the bad from your habit? Fume is an innovative, award-nominated device that does just that. Instead of electronics, fume is completely natural. Instead of vapor, fume uses flavored air. And instead of harmful chemicals, fume uses all natural delicious flavors. You get it. Instead of bad, fume is good. It's a habit you're free to enjoy and makes replacing your bad habit easy. Your fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial and is designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting, giving your fingers a lot to do, which is helpful for de-stressing and anxiety while breaking your habit. The first time I used fume, I was shocked at how flavorful and fresh it tasted. Now, it's easy to hold and perfectly balanced and quite honestly, extremely fun to fidget with. The real wood material and sleek design definitely classes it up and I feel pretty darn cool holding it. Stopping is something we all put off because it's hard, but switching to Fume is easy, enjoyable, and even fun. Fume has served over 100,000 customers and has thousands of success stories. 
And there's no reason that can't be you. Join Fume in accelerating humanity's breakup from destructive habits by picking up the journey pack today. Head to tryfume.com and use code MIDAS to save 10% off when you get the journey pack today. That's tryfum.com and use code MIDAS to save an additional 10% off your order today. We are back Let's live go. on the Midas Touch podcast. Let's go. Let's ben Mycel is here, joined by Brett and Jordy Mycel. It's just on the break. You, you can't see me during the break, but I have a big <laughs> smile on my face because I honestly have so much fun doing these podcasts. I, I try to look at some of the comments. So if you go, well, Ben, why are you like looking down sometimes? Because I'm reading your comments and I can't respond to them because it's hard for me to multitask that much. But I really appreciate your comments. I love your emojis. And I really just have the time of my life hanging out with the Midas Mighty community. And I know I always give the thanks at the end of the show, but I truly mean it. Like, thank you. Like, you bring us so much joy. And for us, it's a thrill and honor to be a part of this community with you all. Because this is more than a show. This is family. This is friendship. And this is just so great to, to spend this time together. All right. I'll stop being mushy. Aww. But that was my Aww. that was my reflection during the break. I'm like, I'm just really having like the time <laughs> of my like the time of my life right now. I, mean, I don't know if other people who do news just enjoy it this much. But anyway, I could go on and on, <laughs> and on for that forever. <laughs> Sorry. We're we, we digression. All right. Marjorie, <laughs> Marjorie Taylor Green has been kicked out of the freedom caucus she's not extreme enough see i don't i shouldn't call them the freedom Caucus. that's what they call themselves good catch right they stand for the exact opposite of freedom these are like the far the furthest fringe i suppose although they're all very far fringe right wing magna republicans at this point but that's what this self well, it's what they call themselves the freedom caucus so marjorie taylor green used to be part of this she was still a part of it until today. Today, they voted her out. You could see the divisions when Marjorie Taylor Greene supported Kevin McCarthy, the weakest speaker of the House in history, so she could get on the House Oversight and Homeland Security Committee so we could all see her disgrace our nation at these committee hearings each and every, every day, and so she could go in sensitive compartmented information facility skiffs based on these positions and then leak our classified documents to Fox and to other Right-wing media, but I digress. So starting back in January, she was talking crap about Lauren Boebert and kind of Matt Gates and other people who were part of this freedom, fake freedom caucus or whatever they call themselves. And there was all of those fights back then. Um, and what we learned about the vote today, technically the vote happened last month. It hasn't been, uh, it was just reported today. Um, but yeah, Marjorie Taylor Greene got kicked out. And one of the reasons they say that she got kicked out is because on the house floor, she called Lauren Boebert a little bitch. That was a, and, and then she went on and bragged about how she called Lauren Boebert a little bitch. And then Lauren Boebert went on the media, leaked to the media that that's what went down. And then Marjorie Taylor Greene got mad at Lauren Boebert for leaking to the media that she called Lauren Boebert a little bitch. This is the level of maturity of these MAGA Republicans um, and the this Freedom Caucus, again, this is what they call themselves. They were also upset at Marjorie Taylor Greene for supporting the bipartisan debt ceiling bill and just generally going along with Kevin McCarthy. And like Marjorie Taylor Greene's Kevin McCarthy thing, though, you know, truly has been like very, very weird as well. I mean, so everything weird. they do is weird, but like she spent a hundred thousand dollars of donor money to buy used chapstick that was used by Kevin McCarthy so that she could sit in on a meeting with Kevin McCarthy and donors. And then she like proudly displayed the used chapstick. How much do you think I could get for this chapstick? Used, <laughs> half used. What do you think? What I didn't know you were a chap. Now? I didn't know you were a chapstick guy. Now, 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 taking bids, everybody you. in the chat. It's, it's, it's really. By the way, that should have been it's like even disgusting. bigger. 
So much, so much happens. That should have even been like a bigger story to, to spend a hundred thousand dollars of donor money on Kevin McCarthy's freaking chapstick. Like, I just want to make sure people know we're not making that up. Like if you missed that in the news cycle, yeah. that literally happened. Marjorie Taylor Greene is like Kevin McCarthy's Carrie Lake. And it just borders on like a weird, it's Hilarious. like, it's, it's just incredibly, incredibly <laughs> bizarre. And if you remember from the Kevin McCarthy votes, the people who continuously voted against Kevin McCarthy during those votes were people of this so-called, I'll just call them the fascist caucus. The people of the fascist caucus were the people who kept voting down Kevin McCarthy. So there's a lot of discomfort there over Marjorie Taylor Greene's relationship with Kevin McCarthy and her desire basically to attain power at any cost, even if that means appeasing Kevin McCarthy every step of the way, whom they hate. So there's this tension that's been arising and and they say that the, the Lauren Boebert situation on the House floor was the straw that broke the camel's back in this situation. But the, the true reason was in a vacuum, they don't care about her behavior, in my opinion. They, they don't care what she says, what she does. They care that she's supported McCarthy. They care that she ultimately mm. did not vote to torpedo the entire economy, crash and burn the entire U.S. economy, which was the ultimate goal of the fascist caucus uh, in Congress. So, you know, the, uh, this whole party right now, this whole Republican Party is all in chaos. They're all at war with one another. And the extremists are also being really detrimental to the party as a whole here because they're also scaring away donors. They, they have this weird catch 22 now, right? Where the energy of the party is with the most insane people in the party. Mm -hmm. These crazy Trumpers, these fascist caucus people, the, the, the total, for lack of a better word, the total nut jobs. But those people are the same people who repulse the average voter who turn away all voters and who turn away all the big dollar donors that Republicans actually need to win races. So you're seeing right now in a lot of these swing states, these Republicans and the Republican committees are just burning, burning cash. There was a report in Reuters recently that said the major Republican donors to the Arizona Republican Party, the Michigan Republican Party, who have in the past donated tens of thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars to the party over the set, over the past six years, have completely stopped even giving these Republican parties any money because they give them the money. And mm -hmm. what do they do? They go on these wild goose chases for Donald Trump. They start spending the money on these election fraud campaigns and all their dumb stuff. And they're like, why am I giving you $100,000 if you're going to burn it? And so they've stopped. And now you have situations like Arizona's Republican Party on March 31st reported that they had less than $50,000 in cash. Like, like, By the way, these are the so-called fiscal conservatives, right? They For had sure. less than $50,000 in the bank, the Arizona Republican Party. And if you want to- The whole party. <laughs> the whole party. <laughs> and, and if you want to compare that to the same point four years ago during the previous election cycle- Four years ago, they had seven hundred seventy thousand dollars in cash reserves, and this is this is not just limited to Arizona. This is like all the big swing states. Michigan, they had one hundred sixteen thousand in the bank as of March thirty first, compared to eight hundred sixty seven thousand two years ago. This is what the former head, the former head of the Michigan GOP, said about the situation. This is a guy named Jason Rowe. Quote: They are effectively broke, and I don't see the clouds parting and the sun coming out on their fundraising abilities absolutely brutal and devastating for them heading into this election cycle well look at those two states right so arizona the gop chair was kelly ward right we are the orange, orange mafia <laughs> who here is ultra mega i mean i mean this I mean, real thing she said like, real real thing she said Actual, I, that was a, it's a Quotes. far better impression than many of my impressions right there. And then, <laughs> and, and and then in Michigan, you've got you've got Christina Caramo, who's like a deranged conspiracy theorist, and she likes like I was going to work today and I saw a possum being eaten by a bald eagle, and so therefore I thought of the globalist conspiracy. You know, it's like 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 what what is going on? What are you talking about? Like these are. 
go back. I'm not going to show the clips. And Brett knows I love to get both of those clips into as many <laughs> videos them. as I can. <laughs> I'm not because it's because it's such a symbol. Like it's these are the highest position in the Republican Party for a state. Like I'm not taking a cheap shot. I'm not finding, you know, the Charlie Kirk McGurk follower who's, you know, you're not libs of TikTok in it, right? Yeah, exactly. I'm not finding some random person and punching down. Okay. I don't do that. This is the top people who are supposed to be the top leaders of the party. See, are real symbols that need to be reinforced over and over again that these people are not serious people. These are very dangerous people. And that's why I do the impressions and I show you that because that's actually what's going on and the way you're like, Ben, that's hilarious. And, you know, and, and you do, but like, that's truly what they did. Like <laughs> yeah. that's, like that's, that's real life. That's, that's who they, that's who they are. Speaking about real life. I, I like Walt your, I like your impression of the audience too. And, and I know you're like, Ben, you're so hilarious. Ben, <laughs> ben, 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 you are so good looking and funny. And like, and, but like, guys, I it's, go it's, there. it's <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't take, I didn't take, I did not take it there. I, I, I just simply, you were, I, you were, you were very close to taking it there. I think for having a point. Can, 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 can I add this too? So <laughs> heading into this next election cycle, Brett, to your point there, I think, I think the American voter is going to sit down at a, at a certain point if they haven't already and really ask themselves, like, what has this Republican Party? done like like since they've taken control of Congress, like what what have they been able to do for me it took them 15 rounds to elect a speaker uh they've held a bunch of weird sham hearings that didn't help any people at all they continue to just fight with them and they're only in the news when marjorie taylor green calls lauren bobert a little bitch it's just like <laughs> what have they actually done for you america and for the american people what what have they done Ab the answer is absolutely nothing and I and think they've the sort of caught wind of that in the last midterm cycle. That's why it was not a red wave. And that's going to continue to carry over. And that's why I say all the time, give them the microphone, let them speak. They're professional rake steppers. They're going to cause a scene every step of the way. And it's not going to resonate with American voters. And then I respond and we have to showcase what's really going on. You, you all remember, I'm dating myself here, but remember Game Genie that you could just cheat on like Nintendo and then like you do Game Genie and then you get like infinite lives and you could like just beat the game of all of your favorite games. Like I don't need the media to give these MAGA Republican fascists a media version of Game Genie. Like why are you helping them? Another example from our video game days, like putting computer assistance on to make the games close. Like, I don't need you to do that. Like our democracy is on the line here. Like, can you just say what we all see? I don't need to be gaslit by you. That's fascist. That's dangerous. That's crazy. Just please just, just say what it is. And, you know, I, I guess we found a niche here at the Midas Touch Network, just looking at something and going, here's what it is, right? <laughs> but you see it too, right? And then people are like, yeah, I see it. <laughs> Why isn't anybody else saying it this way? Anyway, as I said, you know, how is this real life? Walt Nauta got a taste Walteen. of, got a taste of real life today. Walt Nauta finally finally is able to have his arraignment. That's where you enter a plea. He pled not guilty at the June 13th arraignment. Walt Nauta showed up with an out-of-state lawyer who's not licensed to practice uh, in the state of Florida, Stanley Woodward. And Stanley Woodward said, we need more time. This is the case brought by special counsel Jack Smith, Walt Nauta, just to be clear, is Donald Trump's co-defendant in the obstruction of justice, willful retention of national uh, defense information, conspiracy and making false statements case before Judge Eileen Cannon. The arraignments, though, take place not before the Article Three federal judge, but before a magistrate judge. So the June 13th arraignment, Donald Trump pled not guilty. Walt Nauta didn't have a lawyer. All right, come back on June 27th. Uh, only Stanley Woodward showed up like Walton out to missed his flights like the flight got canceled. Stanley Woodward's like, but judge, we take it very seriously. We're trying to find a, a lawyer. Um, so they continued it one more time to July 6th. And finally, Walton out has found a lawyer. Her name is Sasha Dayton. If anyone wants to correct my pronunciation, I'll get it right. But I think it's Dayton. <laughs> um, and this is this is Sasha Dayton 
hurt in an auto accident, call the Dayton and Bana law. I'm not advertising the firm. Don't call them. Um, please don't call them. Please. <laughs> not a sponsor. That not a sponsor. <laughs> don't recommend. That, definitely not a sponsor. Please definitely don't call them. And and here is from her other website that she is part of the sex crime defense team. Uh, the sex crime defense. Yeah, you know, a lot of people were saying this Sasha Dayton, you are throwing your career away by representing Walt Nauta. Um, I, 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 I really don't view it that way. I, I'll give you truthfully. I know we've been doing lots of jokes, but my, my view of it is everybody, including Donald Trump, has the right to competent counsel. And don't take my word for it. It's a constitutional right. So I think it is an important part that criminal defense lawyers play. But if you notice, we don't really criticize Trump's lawyers like Todd Blanche or Susan Necklace or lawyers who are just acting like lawyers and who are asserting defenses. The people who we criticize are people like Alina Haba and Christina Bob um, and the lawyer Jim Trusty when he would former lawyer because he's yeah. Jim Trusty, unlike Alina Haba and Christina Bob, like Jim Trusty actually had a very good reputation. He used to work with special counsel Jack Smith, you know, decades ago. He was in the public integrity section. So when he would go on and do these interviews, he was lying. He knew he was lying in the interviews. So to me, when you do that, then you're going to come under the lens of the Midas Touch Network. Joe Takapina, he's like snatching the papers and acting like a maniac and attacking, you know. Tacky Takapina. Tacky Takapina. Yeah, I mean, like in this case, Ben, right, I, I think this speaks more to Walt Nauda's situation than it does to this attorney. I mean, we've yet to hear from her or know her. We don't know if she's going to do the TV rounds or anything yeah. like that. But but everyone has a right to competent counsel. Absolutely. Right? Like, no, the, worst, the worst person in the world has a right to competent counsel. That is a constitutional right. And a lawyer should not be ashamed to take a case like that. But when you start just blatantly lying, when you yourself become a co conspirator and like all the situations Ben said with those other attorneys then you cross the line into different territory yeah, John Eastman, but, Rudy Giuliani when you exactly. become criminals but when you're looking at Walt Nauta and he is picking somebody who in this space is relatively inexperienced I think it shows that to me at least I don't know your take but to me, it seems like he's not taking the process all that seriously. And you see, he, he's always with Donald Trump, too, which is one of the most interesting things because they have like a, a court order, right, where they're not even supposed to be really speaking about this case. But Donald Trump is keeping a very tight watch on Walt Nauta. They're going everywhere together. We saw them at the Philly cheesesteak place recently. We see them at all these various events together. We saw them at the Cuban restaurant in Miami right after Trump's arraignment. It's very bizarre. And the only thing that I have to assume with somebody like Walt Nauta is he is taking a bet right now. He's making a gamble that if Donald Trump gets elected, I will be pardoned. And that's what I'm going to shoot for. I have no other shot otherwise. I am being watched by Trump. He's paying for my attorneys. I believe Trump is paying for this attorney as well. And so I have no choice right now other than to just go all in, no matter how ridiculous it is, no matter how ridiculous my argument it is, no matter what the sentence may be, no matter how guilty I am, I am going to plead not guilty. I'm going to make my case. And if they say I am guilty in the court of law, I'm going to hope that Donald Trump becomes president and that one of the first acts he will do is pardon me for my loyalty. That's the long game that, to me, I think Walt Nauta is playing. I'm not sure if, if you have a similar theory. Look, he is caught on surveillance footage doing exactly the opposite of what he told the FBI he was doing or what he was aware of, like the day before. So you see him on the surveillance footage in May and June that the DOJ got their hands on hiding the classified document boxes and moving them around. He was asked in an interview with the DOJ if he knew anything about these boxes. He's like, oh, what boxes? I don't know what you're talking about. What are you with boxes? I'm, I'm not even sure of the procedures. So it is very basic liability that he engaged in making false statements. And we learned a lot about that in some of the additional portions of the search warrant affidavit that was used to support the search warrant back in August of 2022 was released. And some of the most damning portions relate to Walt Nauta. 
And Walt Nauta back in 2022 was identified as witness number five, not as co-conspirator, not as anything, you know, and he would have been treated as a witness had he cooperated in the process. They've got him on tape. They know what he did. There's really no great defense for him at all. And to your point, Brett, his bet is Judge Eileen Cannon, hopefully Trump or another Republican wins one day and I am pardoned. And ultimately my loyalty will be rewarded and I'm going to go down if he goes down. That is the gamble that Seems he like is taking. Bet. And look, th there does also feel that there is a bit of a kind of eerie quiet right now in special counsel Jack Smith's investigation before the storm. Like, I don't know if something's coming next week. I have no inside information about it, but it certainly feels like there is some big news about to drop. And I mean, I feel like a little bit like, you know, one of those psychics who predict things, but like they make it so general. I predict something's going to happen <laughs> tomorrow because, because a lot of big things are happening. So I want to let you know, I am a little self-aware and critical of what I just said, <laughs> but I truly, be <laughs> but I truly believe that there is is big. I'm like mocking myself right now. I'll tell you what's going on in the special counsel, Jack Smith investigation, but let's take our final break of the show. Oh, hey, when did you get here? Let's take a quick break to talk about our next partner, Henson Shaving. Look, everyone knows how annoying cheap razors are. The cuts, the irritation, the frustration. And don't get me started with subscription razor services, the headaches that those can cause. That's why you got to meet Henson Shaving. Henson Shaving is a family-owned aerospace parts manufacturer that has made parts for the ISS. That's the International Space Station and Mars Rover, and now they're bringing precision engineering to your shaving experience. Razor blades, they're like diving boards. The longer the board, the more wobble, the more wobble, the more nicks, cuts, and scrapes. A bad shave, it, it isn't a blade problem, it's an extension problem. By using aerospace grade CNC machines, Henson makes metal razors that extend just 0 0.0013 inches, which is less than the thickness of human hair. That means a secure and stable blade with a vibration free shave. It gets better. The razor has built in channels to evacuate hair and cream, which makes clogging virtually impossible. Seriously, Henson Shaving wants the best razor, not the best razor business. That means no plastic, no subscriptions, no proprietary blades, and no obsolescence. The Henson Razor, it works with standard dual edge blades to give you that old school shave with the benefit of new school tech. Once you own the Henson Razor, it's only about $3 to $5 per year to replace the blades. My first shave with the Henson Razor was incredibly refreshing. The design is sleek and the durability is top notch. The Henson Razor is truly much better than your run of the mill quote unquote traditional razor brand. And the affordability factor is absolutely game changing. No more wasting your money on expensive blades. With Henson shaving, you get a year year of blades for just $5. Okay, so here's what you have to do. It's time to say no to subscriptions and yes to a razor that'll last you a lifetime. Visit hensonshaving.com slash Midas to pick the razor for you and use code Midas and you'll get two years worth of blades free with your razor. Just make sure to add them to your cart. That's 100 free blades when you head to H-E-N-S-O-N S H A V I N G dot com slash Midas and use code Midas. Welcome cool. back. We are live. Midas Touch Podcast. During Crystal the break, Ball Ben. Crystal Ball Ben. What do you got? Exclusive what big do, news. What do you got? What have there's you conjured a, for us now? There is a Jack Smith update. I oh, would like to oh. report an exclusive CNN report that's from the Warthog himself. <laughs> <laughs> Special counsel Jack Smith is questioning witnesses about the chaotic Oval Office meeting after Trump lost the 2020 election. I feel like CNN just did what I did, though. Like, I mean, clearly Jack Smith would be interested in this meeting. Like, duh. Like the December 18th meeting that was yeah, covered. That, huh? <laughs> that was like covered all the time by the January 6th committee where like one of Donald Trump's aides opened the door and like allowed into the White House, like 
who other Trump lawyers called team crazy. You had like Sidney Powell and you had Giuliani and you had like the former Overstock CEO who just gets thrown in there. You had like Mike <laughs> Flynn and they were basically telling Trump, you know, you got to appoint Sidney Powell as like a special counsel and you got to appoint Jeff Clark as the acting attorney general and you've got to seize voting machines and declare martial law. So yes, CNN, Great exclusive. I'm glad that you've nailed down that witnesses are being asked about this. But I mean, obviously, it is a <laughs> it, it, it is something that Jack Smith in his election interference criminal investigation. Crystal Ball is, says Jack Smith is curious about. He's curious the about the key <laughs> meeting where Donald Trump was about to declare law and voting machines. Well. But that does come after Rudy Giuliani is, you know, the timing of the story, I guess, is how I think we should analyze this. Right. Because we talked about on the last episode here that Rudy Giuliani has entered into a proffer agreement with special counsel Jackson. He's been awfully quiet lately also. And a proffer agreement is like a cooperation agreement. It's pretty much the same thing. Yeah. You get a limited immunity. It's only limited to what you say during that meeting with Department of Justice officials. You're not immunized from things that the DOJ and FBI know about you um, from other uh, incidents or that they got independent of your meeting. You can't lie. If you lie, you get charged with perjury and making false statements. That's a crime. And if you leave out any detail, any limited immunity, you lose it. And so then you get basically prosecuted for all the things you say, even if you have a small omission. So that's why when you do a proffer agreement, it's like your lawyer will advise you, like, you better say everything. If you leave something out, the whole point of this not only is thrown out, but now you've just made a confession that they can use against you. So that just broke from CNN. That was a CNN exclusive. And we also have been learning that special counsel Jack Smith has been focused on Arizona uh, in particular. We had previously reported how Doug Ducey, the former governor of Arizona, said that he was subject to kind of a pressure campaign by Donald Trump that felt or looked similar to what Donald Trump was doing with Brad Raffensperger, secretary of state of Georgia. Notice, I mean, Doug Ducey, Republican. Brad Raffensperger, Republican. Like Rusty Bowers in Arizona, who we now also know that special counsel Jack Smith spoke to earlier in the year, like very Republican. Like Rusty Bowers. Okay. <laughs> Rusty the name Bowers. Let's be real. Rusty that's, that's Bowers. If I were to come up with a movie script of before <laughs> Donald Trump, of who would be like the conservative Republican? I would name him Rusty Bowers, okay? He also sounds like a very old-timey baseball player. Rusty Bowers. That's such 300. a good baseball name. Oh, it's my good, God. It's a good baseball Hall of Fame, name. Rusty right. Bowers. Rusty Bowers. Bowers. Pitching. Rusty. The, the Detroit <laughs> Tigers. Yeah, 100%. Rusty Bowers. But anyway, so people may be saying, why is special counsel Jack Smith, though? See, he's just issuing a subpoena to the Arizona Secretary of State. We believe it, it took place in, in May to Adrian Fontes. By the way, he was a friend of the Midas Touch uh, network, a friend of the show, a Democrat secretary of state. He beat a very dangerous election denying candidate as well. So mm -hmm. that was a big victory for democracy there. And so now these documents are actually going to be turned over. And by the way, imagine these subpoenas happening and you have a guy like Mark Fincham, who Adrian Fontes was running against one of these election deniers. It'd be a much different uh, situation right now, which is also why the secretary of state races throughout the country are so incredibly, so incredibly important. Mm -hmm. No, no doubt about it. But we also learned as well that this really isn't the first subpoena. Special counsel Jack Smith has been speaking with all of a lot of these people, you know, for the better part of the last year, nailing down these interviews and pretty much speaking to Republicans, Republican members of the Senate uh, in Arizona, the House in Arizona and people who were subject to uh, these kind of Trump pressure campaigns and, and also spoke to Rusty Bauer. So that's some big news to report there. But Brett, why don't you give us also some good news about what's taking place in some Democratic states? Let's talk about some state Democratic wins. I really like this one in Wisconsin. What happened there? The Wisconsin one is really one of my favorite stories in politics, <laughs> possibly of the year. I, I love a good legal jujitsu. This move by Governor Tony Evers of Wisconsin, it reminds me a lot of 
what the Disney lawyers did with Ron DeSantis, where they put provisions in the contract for that Reedy Creek agreement that uh, that the DeSantis lawyers were uh, too incompetent to actually read. And they ended up like extending their power in the district for like hundreds and hundreds of years. Well, Governor Tony Evers of Wisconsin did a very similar thing in his state. So they have a Republican legislature in Wisconsin and they submitted a budget to Tony Evers. Right. And they wanted to basically they, they wanted to phase out the uh, funding for the like school funding. Right. By the 2024 2025 school year. This was for child care, school safety, public universities. And here's what the governor did. It was so brilliant. So he used his ability to issue a line item veto. And instead of, I'll pull it up because you have to almost visualize, you almost have to be able to visualize it if I, if I have it. Um, so what he did was he took out his veto pen and he wiped out from, you know, it said 2023 to 24 school year and the 2024 to 25 school year. He crossed it out so that it said the funding extends to the 24 25 school year, the year 2425, <laughs> effectively extending these benefits for 400 years <laughs> rather than expiring next year. And wow. it's really like a brilliant, brilliant wow. act of legal jujitsu. He's dealing with this Republican legislature who wants to get rid of these policies, who wants to get rid of childcare, wants to get rid of school safety, who wants to get rid of the public universities. And all the Republicans had to do in their budget was like spell it out and not write the numbers like that. Or in addition to the numbers, write it. You know, like when you write a check, you also spell out the numbers. Well, they did not do that here. So he literally just crossed out the digits until it said this will go until 2425. And he extended those benefits for literally four centuries, like just a absolutely brilliant way to deal with those Republicans trying to take away these rights. Then we move to Ohio, another obviously very, oh, very important state, a state also where Democrats in recent years have been very boxed out by Republican majorities. But you have the people rising up. This is the Republicans worst nightmare when the people decide to take actions into their own hands and you have a lot of activist groups who said okay you want to try to take away our rights to abortion guess what we are going to put a constitutional amendment to enshrine abortion rights in the ohio state constitution so in order to get there they needed i believe the number i have here is 413,446 signatures to get it on the ballot well they got over 700,000 signatures for the ballot measure. That's 70% more than they actually needed. So now those go to the Republican Ohio Secretary of State, Frank LaRose. They're going to review the signatures. They do signature checks and all of that. They make sure that there's enough valid signatures there in order to get this on the ballot. So it is far more likely than not that a constitutional amendment to enshrine abortion rights in the Ohio State Constitution will be on the ballot in the next election. Another huge win for people. And these are the actions that you see Republicans also immediately regret. You know, they go, we got to give the power to the states, right? We got to let, let the people decide, let the people decide. And once the people decide, you'll, you'll see even with this one, you will see, they will try to see what they could do with the courts. They will try to do everything they can to mm -hmm. try to revert the decision of the people yeah. the same way they did, I believe in Kansas, uh, when they freaked out after the people voted because people, whether you're a Republican or Democrat, they do not want their freedoms to be taken away. And what the Republicans have been incredibly consistent of as aside from their, absolute craziness over the past few years is they've been incredibly consistent in stripping away the freedoms of Americans. And that's something that we need to also be incredibly vocal about, that that really is the fundamental thing they stand for. How could we restrict Absolutely. your freedom? How can we make it so you want to do less, say less, uh, yep. your kids have less opportunity. So you get less benefits, fewer benefits. It's really unbelievable to see it play out. And that's why we need to use these terms. We cannot let them co-opt the term of freedom like Ron DeSantis tries to do as he strips away your freedom. We cannot let that kind of thing slide anymore here. The Supreme Court, though, 
dating back, well, at least through the 70s and, and maybe even into the 80s with a lot of their decisions, though, did somewhat reflect the views of the American population and, in fact, had certain rulings to enshrine these freedoms and to recognize civil rights and to stop attacks on taking away these freedoms. And in many ways, you know, if you look back at the court at the time, the Roe v. Wade decision was made, was even slightly a little bit ahead of its time. And, and you would have right-wing justices, but even like a right-wing justice would be like, okay, the Second Amendment doesn't mean that people can have like limitless access to weapons of war. That doesn't make sense at all. Like you had quote unquote, conservative judges and Republican appointed judges who joined with quote unquote, I don't like because they don't really make sense anymore. But generally there would be this consensus of like, of course a woman should control her body. Of course. We forget Ben, Roe was a seven to two decision. Roe was a seven yeah. to two. This wasn't a close call. Roe was a seven to two decision and Roe itself was a compromise. It had a lot of the restrictions, by the way, that Republicans now go, we need this restriction and that. We had those restrictions in Roe. Roe had very clear guidelines for the process of getting an abortion, the requirements, what needed to be. Republicans took that away. So this is on them when they say, okay, well, what do you want? And then they try to do those despicable lies where they go, oh, so you, you want abortion after birth? And we're like, no, that's called killing a person. That's actually not something that is allowed. But guess what? We had something that we could all look to. We had Roe, okay? You took that away. You ruined the compromise. Don't get it twisted here. It was a very popular decision. It was not even a close call in the courts, but because this court is so extreme, so radical, has been so radicalized, this, this party as a whole, everything seems so skewed now compared to what it was decades yeah. ago. It's like, you know, you have these, you, a lot of these you have the, like, and these people aren't even qualified. Like you, you want to talk to, these are the people who lecture us, these right-wing justices on merit. It's got to be merit, 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 merit. I remember those hearings. So the confirmation hearings in the Senate where Trump appointees would be sitting there and the senators would say, okay, so how many people here have done a trial before? Raise your hand. To people who Trump was appointing as judges, nobody would raise their hand. Okay, okay. It would be, be a table of like five or six people. How many of people have conducted a deposition? I think it was one person who raised their hand. Okay, did you take the deposition? No. Okay, what did you do? Well, I assisted the partner at the deposition. So you want to talk about merit? These are unqualified radical people who are not merit-based. Katanji Brown Jackson, as merit as you get. I mean, she was a judge at every single level in Doesn't her get career. Qualified. You want to you compare Katanji Brown Jackson to some of these right-wing justices appointed by MAGA Republicans? It's not even a close competition. And then and you Ben, get that's I was going to say, that's why it's so important, though, that Biden is ha, has um, gotten all these judges confirmed 136. Yeah. He's outpacing exactly. pacing George W. Bush. He's outpacing Obama. He's outpacing yeah. Trump. And sure. we see the effects, though, that these federal judges have. And I want you to explain, because this case just seems so wild to me. This Trump appointed judge in Louisiana, the social media company ruling, deciding what the Biden mm. administration's communications can be with social media companies related to COVID. Like what is happening here? It's, it's, it's just it's when I, hard I was for like, me to, it's hard for me to even explain it. It's like the Biden administration would put it, let's not take social media, for example, right? Let's say a news outlet is putting out false information, right? You have a press department at the White House, right? You have communications directors, right? They reach out to the writer and say, hey, you got this wrong. 
It's the, can you correct it? Does the writer have to? Does the writer go, oh my God, you threatened me. No, I feel horrific. No, I mean, that's just what you do. If there was a threat, that should be illegal, right? So the Biden administration, as social media proliferated, basically would do the same thing. And all administrations would do it, except Trump would actually threaten the people, take it down or else. But when it came to the Biden administration, they would reach out to social media platforms if there were very dangerous accounts, big accounts, spreading lies that were resulting in killing people or misrepresenting policies. Hey, you know, RFK Jr. is saying all these false things about vaccines. Here are the facts. This is very important to us. Do what you want to do, but here's what the actual facts are. And then whether it was Twitter before Elon Musk or Facebook or YouTube or whoever, they could take that and they could go, okay, we agree with that or we don't agree with it. It wasn't like you take this down or else we are going to do something bad to you. There was no threat at all. Just, hey, this is a problematic. This is important to us. But that's kind of part of what communications departments are supposed to do. And it's particularly important here where we're talking about issues like vaccine hesitancy, which basically just means that there were accounts lying about the vaccine to try to get people killed. OK, there were people lying about election results and lying about um, what was taking place and, and and spreading lies about election fraud that didn't exist. And the Biden administration would reach out and say, hey, you know, this is this is problematic. That's not true. Here are the facts. And this Trump appointed judge says this is like the ministry of truth from 1984. That's what the judge. I'm not just making that up. The judge actually said in the ruling that the Biden administration behaved like the Ministry of Truth. Yeah, the judge sounded like, like the writing sounded like Jim Jordan tweets or like something you'd see on Truth exactly. Social, like QAnon, mm -hmm. like just bad shit. Like Crazy. And by the way, this was the judge who previously has blocked all Biden stuff. So you, you try to get in front of this judge. That's part of the hustle here. If you're a MAGA Republican, you get in front of this judge. And in another decision where he blocked the vaccine mandate by Biden, which wasn't really even a mandate. It was get vaccine or get tested. Like, hey, can you like maybe get tested so you don't like get other people sick? No, I refuse to get tested. I'm just going to walk in and cough on people. He just spread so much lies about COVID and downplayed it, you know, and acted like it wasn't even like a big deal, you know? And so here in this opinion, he uses all of that propaganda from the right wing and says, the Biden administration is attacking conservative speech. Notice how they're just going after conservatives. And it goes back to what we said at the outset of the show, which is what Liz Cheney said, which is like, that stuff's not conservative. That stuff is crazy. That stuff is fascist. That stuff is Trumpism. Please do not conflate conservatism. We ain't talking about the Democrats saying, hey, you know that tax policy post? You need to remove that tax policy post because, or, or, or else, okay? It's, it's not saying that, oh, this is a state's rights issue. By the way, Republicans aren't for any of that crap regardless. But this is like right-wing, dangerous, MAGA stuff. And the judge is like, notice they're just attacking conservatives. So the judge issues an incomprehensible injunction. Because on the one hand, they're like, well, the Biden administration can still warn social media companies about foreign threats and danger and lies about the election. But the Biden administration and all of its officials are enjoined, meaning they're stopped, they're blocked from contacting social media companies to uh, either encourage or persuade them to remove things that may infringe upon their free speech rights. So like as you read, the, what, what is that even? So if you're defining, though, uh, like uh, election interference by Donald Trump and COVID conspiracies as, quote unquote, conservative thought, then it would seem to mean that you believe that's an infringement on free speech. So you will be holding the Biden administration in contempt if they reach out like the, it provides no guidance but is this opinion that is, again, it looks like Jim Jordan combined with uh, Lauren Boebert, you know, you know, like wrote the thing. It didn't. The judge wrote it. But like it is 
completely, completely deranged. So um, the Department of Justice has appealed it to the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals in New Orleans. Um, the Fifth Circuit has previously overturned this judge in this case already. Like from the outset, the judge like ordered that all of the top Biden administration officials had to sit for depositions like right away, yeah, like which is unheard of. And the Fifth Circuit, in a unanimous opinion, two George W. Bush and one Obama appointees were like, yeah, no, that's not the way it works, Judge. So the judge from the outset was going to reach this conclusion, mm -hmm. and now it's going to get uh, appealed. But again, this is why control of the Senate was so vital, because McConnell would have blocked all of these appointees. This is why elections, you know, truly matter. This is why you can't get complacent. And by the way, Hillary ben, speak, speaking of Louisiana, like by, President Biden just got a district judge confirmed in Louisiana, and he's got two more nominees in the pipeline. So like this is important. This is structural. And this is something that does ultimately take years and years and years, if not decades and decades. It is truly why every single election is important. Now, just while we're on the topic of elections, I saw somebody mention it in the comments. So I just want to do a shout out for all the Midas Mighty who are in Ohio, that there is a very important election as well on August 8th, where Ohioans are going to decide on issue one. Issue one would raise the threshold for a constitutional amendment to pass from what it currently is as a simple majority or 50% plus one to 60 percent so they are basically trying to make it more difficult to pass constitutional amendments which would affect the law that we spoke about earlier that they're that the, the, they're trying to get for, to enshrine abortion rights in the ohio state constitution so that is something to look out for if you're in ohio um you want to make sure that you research that vote um that you vote no and that you make it as easy as possible to enshrine these rights into the Constitution and not let these Republican legislatures just have full control over the people. I think that's super important. August 8th, look it up, issue one. Uh, do, do some more research on that if you're in Ohio. Make sure you know. People aren't really talking about it, so we, we, we just got to give it a megaphone. We're talking about it. I think the big go. theme is don't compare us. Don't compare Biden. Don't compare the Democrats. Don't compare pro-democracy to the almighty, right? Compare to the alternative. This is about choices. And these are very serious matters, right? Like I have so much fun. I love joking around. I love bringing a sense of humor, you know, to this and, and breaking these issues down in fun ways. But look, this is really important stuff. It really is. This is life or death stuff that ultimately will affect your life, your family lives, your friends, your coworkers, colleagues, neighbors, community, state, and our country. And preserving and protecting and defending our democracy is so, so critical. And that's why it's such an honor to be a part of this pro-democracy community, because we know that after these shows are done, you don't just turn off the show. You share the Midas Touch videos, you let other people know, and just think about the power collectively we could have in supporting our democracy if, frankly, everybody who watches this just shares it with one person then two, then three, however many people, the exponential effect can be, and I think will be the game changer in not just the 2024 election, um, but in all future elections and all primary elections and all elections coming up. It is so vital that we get out these messages of the truth right now. My dogs agree. To they, get agree. Out the they agree. They agree. My baby. dogs agree to get out the messages of truth right <laughs> now. I love that the dogs want to bark at the very end of the show. It's great. <laughs> they were quiet good, for the good, whole show, but yeah, good timing, great, good, great, great, great timing, great, 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 great timing. <laughs> but if you want, if, if 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 you want to make Taquito and Chaquito though very very happy right now, um, one of the ways you can support our uh, growing pro democracy community is by hitting that dollar sign on the YouTube page. Um, that helps and, and buying a membership on YouTube, buying membership gifts for other people. Don't worry if you can't, but that's, then you can access the emojis. It's a fun way to grow this network. Look, we don't have outside investors. So that is one of the ways that we kind of grow the network to support our research and our editors and our contributors and all of the work that we do here. The YouTube membership is different from our Patreon Go to patreon.com slash Midas Touch. With our Patreon, you could, you know, ideally become a member of both. But again, no pressure either way. On patreon.com slash Midas Touch, we have exclusive podcasts, first looks at our videos. You could even become an honorary producer. 
of the Midas Touch podcast. Um, your name appears at the end of the show. Um, you'll get a poster saying that you are an honorary producer and you could have these Zoom meetings with us. You can meet us in person. And then we have these Zoom chats where we all, the last, last one we spent was about three hours. Anybody who wanted to ask us a question, we, all, we answered the questions and it was great seeing everybody who joined that Zoom. Again, I want to give a very special thanks to all the Midas Mighty out there. Oh, go to store.midastouch.com. Jordy's going to get super angry at me mm -hmm. if you don't go to store.midastouch.com. Get the best pro-democracy gear at store.midastouch.com. All 100% made in the U.S. All 100% union made. Like It's great, great, great stuff. Um, so I want to uh, thank everybody who goes to store.midastouch.com. And how about a shout out for our sponsors? That's one of the ways we support our network, right? You got to support the network. Have you got to support the network somewhere. Like, it's got to be something that you got to keep, <laughs> keep the thing moving, right? So I want to thank Alex and Ani, great sponsor. Fume, great, great sponsor. sponsor. Great sponsor. Ensign Shaving, great sponsor. Like, these are great, great, great products. It's a fun way to support our network. Make sure you check them out. And if you give them shout outs on social media, um, the brands always like that. Hey, Henson Shaving. Hey, Fume. Hey, Alex and Ani. We saw you on the show. They love that. It's always great for us. That's one of the ways you can help. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're getting there. 1.5 million subscribers. Um, and if you are listening on audio, podcast only, subscribe to our YouTube. For our YouTube listeners, make sure you are watchers. Make sure you subscribe to the audio podcast and leave a five-star review. Just whatever audio podcast device you use, or app you use, just search Midas Touch Podcast, hit subscribe. That goes a long way to help. And when you're in the car or you're walking around or wherever you're at, you can listen to it. It's fun. You could have us, you could all be having a chat together as you walk. But, but from the bottom of our hearts, thank you all so, so much. We're so grateful for you. We appreciate you. And we'll see you next time on the Midas Touch Podcast. Jordy, take it away. Shout out to the Midas Mighty. The At Midas Touch, we are unapologetically pro-democracy, and we demand justice and accountability. That's why we're spreading our message to Convict 45. That's right, gear up right now with your Convict 45 tees and pins at store.midastouch.com. That's store.midastouch.com.